Hello guys, this video is a continuation of the previous video and in this video I'm going to continue talking about expression and legacy assignments that exist in Odohaki programming. If you're interested in this topic, please continue watching. Alright, welcome back. So, how do I join multiple strings and variables in assignments? Let's first begin with expression assignments. Now, let's just assume that we want to create a message box that would show us what is the result of 1 plus 2, 5 seconds to give an answer. Let's create a message box that gives us these two lines of strings. Now, before we do that, let's learn how to convert, say, these two highlighted parts of the string into variable. So, in order to do that, let's go um, create a variable called time limit first and give it a value of 5 seconds, so 5. And then, let's say, to convert this into a variable, let's create a variable called math underscore question and give it a string of 1 plus 2. Now, remember in expression assignments, if you want to assign a string value to a variable, you need to wrap the string inside quotation marks because if you don't, then this is going to produce a result of 3 instead of 1 plus 2. Next thing we're going to do is to construct the rest of the message and place the variables where they should be. So here and here. So let's go create a variable called result then type out the string what is the result of and place a space because there's a space here and type out the name of the variable and that will be joined it's that simple and then i'm going to start another string and this time this is a string so i'm going to add a question mark and there is a line break between the end of the first sentence in the beginning of the first next sentence and to input a line break or you need to do what you need to do is backtick and end right and then the next thing is going to be the variable that contains the time limit so time limit space and start the quotation mark to complete the rest of the rest of the string so i'll just copy it and remember to put in the space because this variable doesn't contain a space, so you need to put in a space down here. And this is it. This is how you construct this kind of message using variables to substitute this one and that one. So if I go ahead and go message box, result, save the script, run the script, I should get the message box that says, what is the result of 1 plus 2? 5 seconds to give an answer. I can change this to 10 seconds, I can change this, change the value of the string, go ahead and run it, and this time the updated values will show up in the message box. Also please note that you can place a full stop before and after each of the variables within an expression assignment, but this is not a requirement. Some people prefer to put this, I guess to make sure that you know your code is correct, but this is not a requirement. So um, it's up to you whether you want to do it this way. So if I go ahead and run the message box, I get the same result. So how do I do this in legacy assignment? It's also possible to join up variables and strings within legacy assignment. So let me comment out the expression assignment and go legacy assignment. And I'll create the same variables, time limit. And this time I'm using, I'm taking out the column to uh, assign the values using legacy assignment. Math question will be the same, 1 plus 2. Result, what is, what is the result of, now I explained during the previous tutorial that if you want to access the value within a variable for within a legacy assignment, you need to wrap the variable like math question in percentage signs. Um, 
and make sure that you don't place a space between the variable and the next part of the string uh, unless that's necessary because if I place a string it's going to print out this space as well um, so uh, creating a new line is the same so backtick and end and then immediately start again do not uh, create a space unless you need a space in the beginning of the second sentence create the um, sorry reproduce the second variable here and then seconds to give an answer now if I go ahead and show the result in a message box I should be seeing the same result as before now because in expression assignment you are wrapping strings within quotation marks if you want to actually use quotation marks as they are as part of the string within expression assignment what you need to do is let's go ahead and create a new variable called number one and if I go and wrap a value of one within two quotation marks and try to sh show the result in a message box I'll get a number one now if I try to wrap that again with another pair of quotation marks it's going to give me an error but if you wrap the string again with another pair of quotation marks what it's going to do is it's going to print quotation mark one and quotation mark and that's because if you want to print quotation marks as they are you have to go double quotation mark the double quotation mark gets converted into a string of quotation mark so you'll get a quotation mark that replaces these two quotation marks and the same will happen for this part so if I go ahead and run this run this message box I will get quotation mark one and quotation mark that's how you can produce quotation marks as a part as part of the string within expression assignment for legacy assignment obviously it's pretty easy so you just go number one equals quotation mark one quotation mark and message box number one will will give us quotation mark one and quotation mark so which type of assignments should you be using when you are coding in order key the rule of thumb is that you should always always use the expression assignment unless you have to use the legacy assignment why there's two examples i can think of this if you go one plus two and assign that to variable called result chances are you're thinking of performing a mathematical operation of one plus two instead of uh, assigning a string value of one plus two to the result variable now in order to do that you need to use an expression assignment and if you make a habit of using expression assignment you won't be so confused now another example is when you use a function such as I and SDR which is in string it finds for example within a haystack a part of the string so it will it this function will find the position of ABC within this haystack that has one two three ABC seven eight nine you have to assign the re the result which is position of ABC within here into a variable so let me just go ahead and cre create a variable called string pos that stands for string that stands for string position when you so when you create a function like this you need to use expression assignment so you need to put a colon here if I remove the colon and run this script what it's going to do it's, it's going to show me this the function as a string and I don't want that I want the position of ABC within this string so you have to use the expression assignment to get the position of ABC within the string which is 4 now it's not a must that you have to use expression assignment over legacy assignment but if you keep it to 1 
you can avoid unnecessary confusion when you code in AutoHotKey. Now, I'm just going to show you one more thing before I wrap up this part of the tutorial. Um, and that's going to be another way to perform an expression assignment. And it goes like this. So let me just go ahead and create a few variables. Result number one plus number two and message box result. This will show me the result of one plus two. Now this is the standard way of doing an expression assignment. You can also place a percentage sign down here in order to get the same effect. So if I run the message box, I get number three. Now the percentage sign followed by a space is actually a shorthand to convert legacy assignment into expression assignment. So you see how there's only a, uh, an equal sign here and that represents a legacy assignment, but percentage sign plus a space converts it into expression assignment and thereby converting these into variables instead of strings. And therefore, what I can also do is instead of wrapping the result variable within a message box by two percentage signs, I can just go and place one percentage sign followed by a space and then the variable name. And this will produce the same result. Now, let me show you just one last example. This time I'm going to use an input box. I'm just going to create a, a variable called my title and give it a string value of my window title. And my prompt, string value of my prompt. And now I'm going to go ahead and create my input box and output variable my title, my prompt. This is how you access the the values within um, within these variables called uh, my title and my prompt. So if I go ahead and go message box output variable, what it's going to do is now let me go ahead and run it. It creates an input box that asks me to put in an, a value. You can just type in whatever hello, and if I press OK. I'll, sh I'll get that uh, string that I input inside a message box like that. Now, instead of this, what I can do is instead of wrapping these variables in percentage signs, I can just use that shorthand percentage sign followed by a space to convert what comes after as a variable. Right? And same thing for the message box. Now, if I run it, the same thing happens put in a random string and I get that random string inside a message box. Now you might be wondering this output variable where the value that you put in the input box gets stored in, why is this output variable not wrapped in percentage signs like this or have a, a percentage sign shorthand for converting into expression assignment? And that is what I'm going to cover in my next tutorial. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.